Good day. It's sure nice to meet with you and to think about John's gospel today. And we're in the 11th chapter. Tonight, Brian English will be sharing some thoughts uh, at 7 o'clock on the Maywood Facebook page. I hope you'll come and join us. Today we're met with the issue of evil, and there are a group of people who want to kill the Savior of the world. And when we look around, it's not really too hard to see that there are forces every day that oppose God and His guidance for the world. Now, the Bible identifies these forces as the world, the flesh, and the devil. The world is actually the world's system, and it is the way the world is organized to resist God's principles. The flesh is the way people live their lives apart from God. My AA friends have taught me a phrase, my own best thinking, and that phrase is a perfect representation of the flesh. My own best thinking, some will say, is out to kill me, and that's true. The devil and demons are absolutely evil beings that seek to steal, kill, and destroy our lives. John 10.10 10 is a great reference to see that fact. And all three of these forces are at work in the plans of the religious authorities to kill Jesus just before uh, Jesus went to the cross. So if you look at John chapter 11 verse 45, we read, Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. They saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead, and they believed. Verse 46, but some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what he had done. So the chief priests and Pharisees called a meeting of the council and said, What are we to do? This man is performing many signs. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and destroy both our holy place and and our nation. How is it that people who have devoted their life to serving God are now planning to kill the Son of God? How do you get that twisted? Well, Psalm 2 gives us an insight into the inside condition of these men. And it is actually the attitude of everyone who wants to live according to the values of the world, the flesh, and the devil. So Psalm 2, verses 2 and 3 say this, The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and his anointing, saying, Let us burst their bonds asunder and cast their cords from us. So there is a pride that evil seeks to resist God's uh, leadership. And it sees submission to God's will as bondage. Uh, the world system is made up of people who have joined together. They've bucked up their back. They've decided they're going to rebel against God. And they're going to seek to be free completely from his direction. The world, the flesh, and the devil is controlled by this arrogance that will not submit to a loving God. We don't want to be a part of that crowd. The truth is... All of us know a piece of that, but how can we get free from it? Jesus has an offer for us, and the offer is to live a life that is not found in pride and rebellion against his rule, but rather in coming to him. Let's read what he has to say. Jesus says, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's found in Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30. And I really encourage you to spend some time thinking, pouring your mind over those words, because they're so important. Here's a couple of quick thoughts about them. Instead of casting off God's yoke, his direction, Jesus invites us to share his yoke. He will do the hard pulling in our life. What he wants is our cooperation. Come to him and let him do the work as we follow him. Unlike the religious leaders who were full of pride, uh, Jesus is gentle and humble in heart. It is the height of arrogance to not be willing to take direction from the greatest being of all, Jesus. Let's pursue 
humility, and a willingness to submit our own best thinking to the direction of Jesus. Now that's said very briefly, but we could spend a long time working. God, help me to be humble. God, help me to submit to you. God, help me to come to you. I hope we'll do that. So Jesus' invitation is to learn from him and to enter into his abundant life. And we can begin our day every day like this. We can say, Jesus, I submit to your direction for my life. Please teach me and I will follow you. This uh, section has a lot to do with evil. You remember the world, the world system, the flesh, our own best thinking, and the devil and demons. The beauty of God's work is evil does not win. Even at their most evil point, the religious authorities were used to prophesy about Jesus' effect on the world. So let's read again John's Gospel. John 11, 49-54. One of them, Caiaphas, who was high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all. You do not understand that it is better for you to have one man die for the people than to have the whole nation destroyed. John gives us a commentary on this led by the Holy Spirit. He says, He did not say this on his own, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus was about to die for the nation, and not for the nation only, but to gather into one the dispersed children of God. From that day on, they planned to put him to death. And in verse 54 we read, Jesus no longer walked about openly among the Jews, for he went from there to a town called Ephraim in the region near the wilderness, and he remained there with his disciples. Tomorrow's Good Friday on the church calendar. This is when we remember Jesus' death on the cross. Uh, from nine in the morning until three in the afternoon, Jesus was suspended on a cross outside the city gates of Jerusalem. Jesus suffered both physically and spiritually. His physical suffering was the worst possible way to execute a criminal. However, his spiritual suffering was even greater. Isaiah 53 describes what Jesus suffered for us that no other person on earth has ever gone through. Let's read it. Isaiah 53, 5 and 6. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of it all, of us all. Somehow, in the activity of God, as Jesus hung on that cross for six long hours, he had laid on him all of our sins of all humanity. Thank God for him on the cross, and thank God that on Sunday we will celebrate his resurrection from the dead. Jesus did exactly what the high priest prophesied, even though the priest was full of evil motives. Jesus died for all of humankind. He was raised from the dead so that we can have an abundant life and a relationship with him. So as we end this up, let's ask a question. How do we run from the world, the flesh, and the devil? And I think the best thing we can do is to not fall into the trap of evil, but rather to be fully in love with Jesus. Jesus' words in Matthew 11 are a perfect way to live in a loving friendship relationship with Jesus. So once again, spend some time with Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Here's some thoughts. Jesus says, come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens. Let's do just that. Let's make a practice of coming to him and pursuing a relationship with him more than anything else. Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. Jesus loves us with an everlasting love. As we live in a loving friendship relationship with him, we'll want to know all about him. People who live a Jesus kind of life will frequently go to Jesus and learn how to live the best life possible. Jesus says, I am gentle and humble in heart. Pride pushes God away. Humility draws God closer to us. 
Here's what James says. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. That's James 4, 6. If we want to know Jesus and enter into a loving relationship with him, we will seek humility by submitting to his loving guidance in every way. Pray with me, please. Dear Jesus, we praise you for your death and resurrection. Today we come to you. We willingly come to learn from you and to follow your directions. We seek deeper levels of humility. Our greatest desire is to know you and to love you. Thank you, Lord. So thank you for watching and being a part of this. <clears throat> Again, tune in to Brian and listen to him tonight. God bless you.